growing in concentric circles is incredibly powerful. And in my opinion, when I look at startups today, I would say almost every single uh, successful startup has followed that formula where where they've started off uh, self-constraining themselves, focusing and honing on uh, developing their craft and being really, really precise because it's really hard to make a product for 500 million people because 500 million people have a lot of different opinions about things and what makes a great product. Um, but you have to start with sort of a core set of customers and solving a cre critical problem for them, basically reducing the time it takes from point A to point B in a pretty material way. And so we started in Sweden, as, and as you said, for a number of reasons, it, it was sort of the perfect market because you had broadband penetration, which back in 2008, 2006, actually, when we started, wasn't a very normal thing. Um, and by 2008, still wasn't very normal. Um, and because people had access to very fast broadband uh, con connections, they used a lot of piracy services to get their content. Um, it also was a place where iTunes was late to launch in because, it, again, it wasn't a very large market, so they, they prioritized other markets before that. So there really wasn't much uh, other solutions that was there. And, and, and then... Um, from a business model standpoint, there was a lot more willingness from labels that we were dependent on to launch this to innovate because, frankly, they didn't have much else of, of options uh, other than, you know, the continuous decline of their their um, their business. So, so uh, we stumbled upon that, but it, it is actually something that I've been ever since. Uh, whenever we do something, uh, it's something that I've been constantly. Um, pushing on the teams that I work with, whether it's at Spotify or or my other ventures at this point, it's just always kind of staying very, very consistent and close and self-constraining our growth, so to speak. Um, and just as an um, analogy, I just recently launched a healthcare business called Nico, and and we launched it here in Sweden too. And, and the way we did that was we kind of controlled everything, uh, but we self-constrained it to one physical location. Um, and uh, that meant, meant that literally, unless you're sent in central Stockholm, there's no way to try the product. And uh, many may say, well, you know, wouldn't have been better to launch it in the U.S. because it's a much larger market and so on. And and actually, uh, for a number of reasons, I, I believe uh, Sweden might be even better because you have a situation where no one pays for healthcare today. So it's a, a, an even harder problem to solve. Um, but the, the benefit is uh, in Stockholm, it's a very large uh, concentration of people at a relatively small surface. So it, it helps from that sort of Venn diagram of opportunity and con constraints in terms of um, TAM as well to be just very concise. Yeah, it's interesting. It's one of the things I actually give advice about when people are starting podcasts. And I, I made this mistake. Everyone makes this mistake is you want to get the biggest guests initially and you want to be broad and copy, you know, so that as many people will listen to it as possible. And one, you suck when you initially start like 100 yep. percent. You're just yep. you're just shitty at asking questions. Your your audio is going to be off, whatever it is. And two, you're wasting your bullets on great people early on. And three, your interests aren't going to be aligned with uh, a target market, right? If I if I just interviewed everyone I wanted to talk to, yep. it's not, no one else has the exact same interests I do. And so I have a ton of respect. And this was the mistake I made. And I, I but uh, all the podcasts that started very narrow, be it uh, the Acquired Guys or, or Lex mm -hmm. Friedman or Patrick O'Shaughnessy or all them, you get the right to expand after you have yep. some success in the middle, yep. right? And, yep. and like, so define your market very narrowly. Lenny does a great job with his product podcast, which I know mm -hmm. your co-founder went on, where it's like, start really narrow, make sure you appeal to that narrow group, and then you can deviate to, this, to the yep. areas to the left and right. And yep. I think it's true of companies. It's true of you know media. It's true of whatever, right? It's an interesting, uh, interesting lesson for sure. Yeah, and and I I, th I think it's um, you know you can even apply it to investing, right? Like uh, your circle of competence is usually a lot more narrow than you think it is, right? And uh, by narrowing yourself, you're going to get higher signal. You're going to learn uh, faster and better, and you can expand over time. But but trying to you know go for everything um, probably means you're going to be pretty average 
Uh, and you can always deviate, right? I tell people I only do series B, mostly B2B investments. And is that all mm-hmm. I do? No, that's not all I do. But like mm-hmm. people have to think of you for something. And so yep. better to narrow what they think of you for. And then you can, by exception, go elsewhere, right? It's just a much easier framework by which to operate. Hi, I'm Logan Bartlett, the host of this podcast. I just wanted to take a quick second to tell you that we have a bunch of killer guests coming on over the course of the next few weeks. And so if you're enjoying these conversations, conversations with both entrepreneurs and investors, please do subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out.